So this morning, I'm going over the Maryland housing statistics and I find it interesting for April 2022, as opposed to April 2021, our statistics state that our inventory has decreased by 13.9%. Our average price has gone up by 8.1%. Our median price has gone up by 8.3%. Our pending units this year, as opposed to last year, 9,112, whereas last year, 9,917. Active inventory is down. Last year, we had 10,000 units, a little bit more than 10,000, during the month of April. This year, only 7,000. In reading an article by Norda Real Estate Investors, I found it interesting where they projected that Zillow stated it increased their bullishness in January. Projected home growth rate would be up 16.4% in 2022 per Zillow. However, they determined that even that rate was too conservative, coming back and changing their statement and saying that the year over year rate of home price growth will hit 22% in May. Then another study by Zillow totaled the value of private residential real estate in the United States increased by a record 6.9 trillion to 43.4 trillion. Guys, what do these stats mean? They're also stating that the experts predicted that the mortgage rates would climb this year, which they have, more quickly than expected, averaging more than 4% for the 30-year fixed rate. I think we're a little bit higher than that now, aren't we? Now, around mid-April into May, it has surged to 5.28%, which is the highest level since April of 2010 that we have seen. And the uptick continues, end quote. Guys, all these stats, what do they mean? Zillow expects the annual home growth to continue to accelerate through the spring, peaking at 22. Then they expect the home value growth is also expected to continue accelerating in the coming months, rising an additional 1.8%, hitting more into the twos. Then by the end of February of 2023, the average home price in the United States will be 400,000, which is up from their 200 and almost 80,000 value statistics that they had previously for last year. So what does this mean to the regular consumer? We see these stats, we see these numbers, we see these headlines. What exactly does the regular consumer interpret those to mean? Are we in a housing bubble? Are we gonna have a crash? That's all these headlines that we're seeing whirling around the media these days. Well, let me tell you what I'm seeing in my industry out there in the streets per se. I'm Rachel Smith, a Remax real estate agent, and this is my show, Real with Rachel, where we get real about what's happening in the real estate industry and beyond. So guys, constantly being asked, hey Rachel, what's happening in the real estate market? What are your predictions? What does your crystal ball say? Well, let me tell you what I'm starting to encounter because what we see right now out there, literally in the streets, day to day, writing contracts this morning, <laughs> appealing appraisals yesterday afternoon, these are the things that we are hands-on involved with minute by minute in real time. Whereas the consumers, you all, are getting this information, these data, these statistics, months later after it's been refined and processed and published for your eyes. But I'm gonna tell you what I'm seeing right now, this week. This week, I am seeing home prices level off. I am seeing inventory sitting on the market a little bit longer. I have recently encountered two of my buyers having to appeal appraisals for coming in less than what they had offered. And it wasn't absorbently over list price like we're seeing these 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 price differences, which are still occurring, we'll get to that, but they weren't that high over and we're still getting kickback from appraisers. We're getting some pushback, we're seeing some changes. Some other things that I'm also seeing now are buyers asking for closing cost help again, which has been very refreshing and I must say, from the buyer end of things, we're seeing less competition. We're seeing longer days on market. 
we're seeing more contingencies. Whereas last year in 2021, people were pulling out the stops. They were removing their contingencies, buying it sight unseen, waiving appraisal contingencies, paying $100,000 over. Let's just get in and do what we need to do, which is fine. I can understand that if that suits your situation. But what happens when these rates start to go up? They tick up just a little bit keep going and keep going usually means that it will mellow out the market to a degree. But what happens and what we are experiencing is these rates jumping at a drastic difference. We started in the fours at the beginning of this year and we have predictions by an economist and a mortgage loan officer and beyond that we are going to be well into the sevens by the end of 2022 going into 2023. So what does that mean for the housing market? What I'm seeing is a little bit of a slowdown, a little bit of a exhale, but we are still right there in the game. We're still seeing the multiple offers. We're still seeing the competition. It's just not as aggressive. There's more inventory coming on, and as more inventory comes into the market and these rates start to go up, you're gonna see a little bit of a plateau. Now, we're also gonna be combating the fact that you've got the supply and the demand, right? There is such a strong demand for inventory and for housing, not only in the sales, but also in the rentals, uh, that, hey, we still wanna buy these houses. We still have the money, we still are interested, we still need a place to live. Well, the sellers are, catching on to that and they're listing their houses. We're getting more inventory. However, the sellers are also hearing all of this data and hearing all the statistics about these buyers going 50, 60, 70, $100,000 over and they want to ride that wave too. Guess what? I feel the wave has started to crest. And what happens is that wave will kind of come down and it might float around there for a little bit, but eventually roll on to shore. So I think as we have an influx of inventory with an increase of rates, we are going to see a little bit more of a slowdown. But with that demand, we're still going to be seeing things moving less than 30 days on the market. We're still going to be seeing higher price points than what we've ever seen before. We're not going to regress back to those price points to a degree unless we do enter into a recession. However, even then, I still feel with supply and demand being outside the nation's capital, outside of Baltimore, New York's here, ocean's there, mountains here. It's a prime, prime area in the DMV where there's still going to be a strong demand. Now, what's going to happen with that supply? Is the building going to increase? Because subsequently, that's what had not been happening. You had these millennials coming into the market. You had the baby boomers wanting to retire, sell their house, and build or do something else, right? Sell or move down south. So you're seeing all these different patterns coming in together and we will see what happens over the next year. But my thoughts from what I'm seeing is that yes, with the rates going up and with inventory slowly infiltrating, we will see a little bit of a plateau per se, allowing buyers more of an opportunity to get in and have less competition, but also still being a valuable market for the sellers to get what they want. Remember, all these houses that have closed, especially without appraisal contingencies, will be used as comps in the future. Six months is typically how long appraisers go back. However, I've had some that have recently gone back a year because of the lack of inventory to compare it to. So as we start to see more and more come on, buyers still doing their thing, we will see transfer and again, a little bit of a plateau. And I think with these rates going up, people are still gonna be interested in buying but the competition isn't gonna be as fierce. We're gonna be able to involve some more of these contingencies. We're gonna be able to ask for closing cost help. And I think these sellers, you know, they're still gonna get a decent price for their home based on the comps, but they're not gonna be getting this 50, 60, 70, 80,000 over ask anymore. And I think that the buyers as consumers are gonna become a little bit more wiser about how they execute their offers, about how they protect themselves. Um, so those are the things that I'm seeing. I've had listings that have had over 100 showings recently, but yet only a handful of offers. That right there is a, is a signal. Yes, this is real with Rachel. I'm gonna give it straight to you. No, I do not knock it out of the park every single time getting 100 grand over, right? This is real. So yes, when you only have a handful of offers with 100 plus showings with your client, that tends to tell you something's happening in the market. When you're having these appraisals come back at 15, 20,000 less than what you agreed upon with the purchase price. That tends to signify that something's happening in the market. When you have a listing that's sitting now on the market for over a week, which right now in this climate, we're like, ah, a week, you know, that tends to signify that something's happening in the market. 
Watch what's happening with the rates, watch what's happening with the inventory, and be strategic about how you want to execute your offers. The best way to do that is to connect with a professional who is out there, as I like to say, in the streets, really seeing what's happening and able to say, hey, this is what I'm seeing and engaging with these other agents versus what you're seeing three, six, nine, or a year, three, six, nine months, or a year down the road. So really listen to those professionals because we are the ones that are out there engaging and seeing it on a daily basis. And the market changes every few weeks, guys. This isn't a spring, summer, fall, winter. It's every, I say three weeks, it is starting to change and shift based on what's going on in the economy, based on what's going on with human emotions, based on what's going on around the world. So as these things start to come into play, we'll see, are we gonna have a perfect storm? Or are we gonna continue to have this push and pull and tug of, okay, we're still getting these lists, but now we can incorporate some of these contingencies. So we shall see as we continue to move on. But I will let you know that what I'm seeing, there's some pushback, there's some pull. And I think that these high, getting absorbently more than list price, unless sometimes 20 to 25% over list price is gonna to start to deter off as we enter into the 2023 world of things. Another thing that we're seeing a lot of guys, which is very exciting for me, is different loan products starting to come back on the market. I just did one with the VA loan, actually a couple of VA loans, whereas sellers only wanted to entertain conventional offers. We're starting to see the VA, the FHA, USDA, which is one of my favorites for the rural area. That's the 100% financing. These are these loan products that help home buyers, especially first time home buyers, get into a property that are well qualified that otherwise the seller who only wanted to entertain cash or 50K over or waived appraisal contingencies, not everybody can do that. So now with the market leveling out a bit, we're starting to be able to see some of these loan products come back into play. These buyers start to utilize them, which in turn allows more opportunities for buyers to get a house. So with more properties inventory coming onto the market, kind of coming on here all in one big bang, we're seeing a lot in the coming soon status before it hits the active status and hits consumer platforms. Uh, we're also seeing some more price drops. So these properties will be sitting for a week to two weeks and then the next thing that you know, you see, oh, price drop, price drop, because they're overreaching for those prices that we were seeing last year. And now that the interest rates are going up, these buyers that used to qualify for 500,000 in the beginning of January, now only qualify for 450. So you're losing a handful of your buyers, more than a handful, a huge chunk of them, that no longer even qualify for that price point that you're trying to obtain, that you would have gotten had it still been super, super cheap money at the twos and the threes, right? So as these rates go up, buying power comes down, which means all the people that were once able to buy your pr property no longer qualify. So now you're gonna start seeing a lot of these so that they can over get into those buyers that do qualify uh, for those more realistic price points. That's what I have for you guys, keeping it real, telling you what's going on, what I'm seeing out there as we're writing offers, executing listings. Feel free to ask any questions. TheSmithPartners.com is the easiest way to reach out to us or go at TheSmithPartners.com. If you have an email, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.